Okay, I'm going to kick this off. So that was a good little like uh, lead in, Tyler, because this is a talk on Go. Um, we're not going to talk much about concurrency or CSP or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to focus on a, a framework called Twerp, uh, which was released by, uh, by Twitch, and uh, how to do RPC with that. So it's a pretty hands-on uh, hands talk. So first of all, what is RPC? So RPC stands for Remote Procedure Call. Um, it's generally used to communicate between services. So you know, typically you think of you know when you build a, a server, you think of like a, an API. You know, typically it's RESTful, right? Uh, RPC is kind of like a minimal version of that. Like it's not. It's kind of just an overarching term. You know, you 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 uh, you're requesting some service to do some call. Um, so we're going to focus on us uh, this the context of this in its in kind of like service oriented architectures. And service-oriented architectures, basically what they are is it's kind of like a, you know, typically people think of like a Rails app, which is kind of like a monolithic app, right? And oftentimes you have one part of that, that kind of like app that kind of starts to fail or it's getting hit with particularly large load. It becomes like a bottleneck. So then you would kind of like go and figure out like, okay, let's carve this into this independently running uh, service. So that often is kind of the start of service-oriented architectures. And it, Basically, service-oriented architectures are just independently running processes that are kind of like working together to fulfill some sort of request. Um, so hard 90 on this slide, but basically, uh, this is a great quote, the more code you write, the greater the surface area for potential bugs. So with that in mind, um, oftentimes when you build like a RESTful service, what happens is you end up writing a lot of like uh, serialization and routing code. So you know you, you put together like an express app. You've got like slash get, you know all, all this, right? It's a bad example, but you have all these kind of endpoints that you have to manage by hand, and that be can become like very tedious. And um, when you have to change it, oftentimes it can get out of out of hand. So a really good tip, especially when you're working with lots of different services with lots of different uh, APIs, you can kind of like build documents that describe those service boundaries and then generate a lot of this routing and serialization code off of that. Um, and uh, so Twitch, uh, or Twerp, actually does this. So RPC libraries generally, and their tooling, allow you to do it. And Go is a particularly good language to build out back-end services. So we're going to go through an example of how to do that um, with Twitch, or with Twerp. So Twerp, <laughs> oh boy, I keep confusing the two. So Twerp is a library released by uh, Twitch. Um, they started out using uh, gRPC, which is another kind of like RPC uh, framework in, in Go. Uh, and they kind of had some frustrations with it, so they kind of stripped it down and released their own library, which is called Twerp. So I was really curious about this when it came out. So they open sourced it like a couple months ago, I think just before Christmas. So I started playing with this, and uh, yeah, I wanted to kind of step through an example for you guys about how, uh, how to do this stuff. So we're going to build an RPC service with it. Uh, so I don't know how many of you guys have played Universal Paper Glyphs. Yeah, there's definitely some fans. It's a, it's a little fun game that's going to ruin your life for about a day. Um, at a high level, you, this is a bit of an aside, you start off pressing a very simple button to make paper clips, and you end up destroying the universe somehow. And it's pretty wonderful. It's like a cautionary ta tale of, about like naive uh, AIs and things. So with that in mind, our service is going to do three things. It's going to get the current number of paperclips, it's going to increment the number of paperclips, and it's going to calculate how close we are to the death of the universe. Yeah? So one of the, so in, uh, in Twerp, the way that you describe these service boundaries, so the document that you use to describe that is called a protobuf file. Uh, so protobuf, so protocol buffers, it's also used in gRPC. Um, basically, it's a, it's a language and a protocol that you can use to kind of describe your services, you know, what their input is and what they're returning. So you can see here at the bottom, this is the top is kind of like a, just, uh, just typical kind of like uh, baggage with the, with the file format. But our, the meat of this is this service, universal paperclips, and these three uh, kind of service uh, endpoints. RPC, get paperclips, increment paperclips, and calculate universe lifespan. Um, you can see empty and then paperclips, size and dread. Those are all of our, our kind of messages that are getting passed around here. And so here they are. So you've got message size. So basically we're describing all the types for the messages that are, are kind of like uh, the types of the fields for each one of these messages that are getting passed around. Um, the one here is kind of again just a, just an index. 
it's uh, it's not actually relevant to the content of these messages or the, or the typing. Um, so let's generate it. So this is uh, so ProTalk is a protocol compiler. So this is a kind of an executable that you can use to generate your uh, your stubs for a client and server code. Um, so here, and with uh, with gRPC, it's kind of a very similar thing. Um, so you're pointing at a path. You're saying this is our output, and uh, and that's about it. So what this does is it creates two files, one with most of your message definitions, and another one with your kind of service functions and the interfaces. So service.twerp.go that's going to contain your client code. Uh, that's going to give you like the the stubs that you use to access this really easily, and uh, it's going to give you your kind of server implementation. Um, well, not the implementation. It'll kind of give you the the high level like how you use it. Um, the usage, pretty much. So implementing the service. So here is our kind of server, uh, kind of constructor and things. We're basically creating an instance of this server. So paperclips there is the state on our server. Generally, you should avoid stateful statefulness. But in this example, we've just got this uh, this one um, struct. So so this is actually so again this is this is Go code that we're now looking at. Um, so we've got a type, we've got a struct, and we've got a function here. Uh, so this function is returning a pointer to an object called uh, server. Uh, and here is our implementation. So get paper clips, you can see you know, we're it, it's going to receive a, a context uh, and an empty object, right? And then it's going to return um, the number of paper clips, so the state of our service. Increment paper clips here, you're going to pass it the size object, and it's going to take that size and increment the server state using that. Um, and return an, an empty object. Uh, and then our last one here, basically, <laughs> it's going to return 42 for the universe lifespan and, uh, and the server state, the number of paper clips. Um, so this is what our dread object kind of looks like. Just as an aside, you can see, like, so we're returning errors here. This is kind of like a Go thing where it's very, very heavy on, like, returning errors for any functions that could possibly fail. So you're, you're constantly dealing with, you know, Oh, it returns an error. How do I handle it? it it's very. It, it's not kind of the the try catch that you might be used to in like uh, Python or something like that, right? Yeah, it's very error, like very explicit about how you handle your errors. So in a main function, so a main function is basically what would be your your entry point into a into a app. So you can see here, this is our basically we're creating an instance of this server. We're passing that into our server stub. So rpc.newUniversalPaperclip server, that's our server stub. We're passing the, our implementation into that to run this handler. And then we're, uh, we're running it, and we're listening on uh, 666. <laughs> Real coincidental, that for it. Um, and yeah, so now we issue a request. So with, a, you know, with REST semantics, you have to, you know, you have to worry about get or post and put and patch and there's a lot of different me like uh, HTTP methods you can use to kind of interact with the server. With uh, with Torp, it's all post. Even if it's a get, it's all post. You don't even have to think about it. Um, and this is the format of any sort of request to a server like this. And here's the sample kind of curl uh, request. So you can see here's our location. Um, you know we're using the the format I just specified. We've got our kind of JSON header, and then uh, we're returning paperclips. So yeah, pretty easy to kind of like interact with. So what does it look like to interact with this from a client? So from another kind of piece of code that wants to use this server we just made, how does it use it, right? So typically you'd have to think about like kind of HTTP and how and how you're going to execute that request. Um, but here, since we have these stubs, basically what we can do is we can just um, create our client. Uh, which is our stub, so new universal paperclips. We can point it at where that server is running, and then we can we've got these kind of methods on the client, right? So client dot increment paperclips. We don't have to worry about creating an HTTP object or anything like that. This is all kind of contained in these server stubs. We can then execute it, and we get an error or we get data, and that's about it. So it's pretty it's pretty straightforward, and it strips out a whole class of errors that could happen in your code. Um, Similarly, with get paper clips, you know, you're gonna execute it, and that's it. Get the number of paper clips back. Yeah. So context dot back. Mm. Sorry. 
<laughs> I'm just wondering what this client uh, context dot background. So that's I think that's another sort of like uh, RPC object that's been kind of hanging out here. It's basically like a context object. Um, so, but anyway, yeah. So calculate universal lifespan. Uh, basically the same thing. We get dread back. Running that client outputs this. Um, the number of paper clips, and then the dread, the existential dread from running this server. So seeing all this, you know, what are the alternatives? So why would you use, you know, Twitch's new twerp library over some of like the big kind of like heavyweight frameworks out there like gRPC? So the, the big thing, and this is kind of slowly, slowly changing, but gRPC requires you to use HTTP2, and they actually include in their, in their binaries kind of their own implementation of HTTP2. And this has you know, implications for a lot of load balancers you might run. So uh, for example, Nginx, until like pretty recently actually, didn't really support uh, gRPC, mostly because their, their HTTP2 in implementation wasn't playing very nice. And I think some of the other load balancers you might run like uh, Haproxy or something like that will also have issues, I think currently as well. Um, and, th and excuse me, Twitch, Twitch definitely ran into these issues and that's what led them to this. Another one is that the runtime is pretty heavy. Um, so like this whole implementation of HTTP2, uh, what that implies is that if you're gonna do an upgrade of, uh, of like gRPC, you kind of have to roll it out across your whole service. You can't really upgrade like one service uh, like independently, right? So, and it, it kind of forces you into doing it when they release a new version. Um, so Twitch bumped into this, and they had some pretty serious kind of like almost outages dealing with this, and that's another reason why they kind of what they kind of went and did this. Another good option is GoKit. So GoKit is like much more minimal. It's basically like a kit of different tools that allows you to do similar stuff. It's got very light opinions, lots of patterns. The difference is that they're not generating code. So that what you just saw, where you kind of like give your implementation into one of these server objects, and it, now you've got a server that you know you kind of you're stuck actually taking a, a request object and a response object and pulling out the the model objects so which would be the messages that you just saw so a lot of that extra logic your it's on you right but you do have kind of patterns that give you pretty you know it, it kind of says how how to do it but you have to make sure that you do it kind of correctly it, it also has kind of opinions but log in instrumentation which uh which uh twerp definitely doesn't have opinions about this stuff and grpc doesn't really uh, either I think it has some light suggestions to use their stuff, but yeah. Anyway, that's it. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>